The downside of it is, is I just wish that we could put the 12 best teams in the playoffs. Not worry about conference champions and all that kind of stuff. And if you do get beat in a conference championship game and you're one of the best teams, you still should get in there because you played really quality opponents and you played good footballs. So that's my only concern about it. I just want to see the best 12 teams in it. And I think most people want to see the best 12 teams in it. All right, Heather, I'm going to start with you on this so, one. Do you – okay, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so so what – his point is very valid, but what this does, what this system does is it ensures that you're never going to see what happened to Florida State again. An undefeated Power Four conference champion is not going to be left out of this. And I had an interesting conversation with SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey about this, and he said there are some people out there who think that I've made decisions with the college football playoff that are only in the interest of the SEC and not in the interest of the greater good of college football. He said, if I would have done that, it would have been the 12 best teams is what we would have been in favor of because they don't need to have a guarantee for their conference champ because the SEC champ is going to be in this thing. So I think Saban makes some valid points because of the upset possibility that I mentioned before. And that's why the 14 playoff was the four best because they didn't want to reward a mediocre conference champion in this system. Well, I mean, Heather, we really, in many ways, never had the four best because there's so much politics in college football that these people, and I know you're close to them, I don't want to ruin your relationship, but they get in the room and they do a lot of group think because a couple of years ago, Alabama was one of the four best teams in the country, but they got left home and TCU rides into the playoff and then loses by, you know, I, th I think... I think Georgia just scored again on TCU out in Los Angeles. I mean, that was absurd. Um, but, but ultimately, you, you just have to deal with it. I mean, to get to uh, a coalition in college sports, you have to let the little guy have a say, and that's why we are at this place. But whether Coach Saban likes it or not, whether Dabo Sweeney likes anything or not, it's still much better today than it was a year ago with only four and ten years ago with only two. This, so more, this more system of the story is gives that, the appearance of fairness. So more of the story is that <laughs> like, we're going to go always see. have people not happy, not excited. Someone's always going to be griping about something when it comes to the college football playoffs. We, we literally, we have gone from four teams to 12 teams. But what Nick Saban is saying, he, he has a, he's making a great point, right? Because if you look at the SEC alone, if it just went to the 12 best teams, we can make arguments that the fifth and sixth best team in the SEC may be better than the second best team in the Big 12 easily. So that, that's a great case that, that he's making. But I also don't believe that these commissioners of these conference will go for that because we do know there's, if there's one conference that's going to get a ton of teams in, if it's just the 12 best, it's the SEC. So I don't think the Big 10, the Big 12, the ACC, I don't think those conferences would go for the 12 best teams because they will see a lot of their teams be exited out of the college football playoffs. Well, if it would have existed last year in the current conference realignment, 10 of the 12 teams would have been from the SEC or the Big Ten. Now, that realistically can't happen because of the way this system is set up, but that just goes to show you how deep those two conferences are. And I just want to make one more point here because I'm not sure casual college football fans understand this. To Saban's point about conference champions getting in, if you are the number 12 team in this system, the number 12 team on selection day could potentially be bumped out for that group of five champion. It would have happened to Oklahoma last year. I don't care what your jersey says. If it's LSU, Alabama, whatever, you could have been bumped for that fifth conference champion because they're guaranteed a spot. You know who that would have been? Liberty. Worst schedule in the country. No power five opponents. Bye-bye Sooners. The Flames are in. I think lastly, I would also say uh, I think when you look at the teams that have independence and most noticeable we're talking about Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. That's a team that can literally go undefeated this season, and they wouldn't fall under that umbrella of those top four teams that we're talking about, uh, Heather and Paul. They could be the number one team in the country. The number one team in the country, no better than the fifth seed, have to win four straight games. But I tell you right now, I talked to Marcus Freeman. Nobody else in the country wants to first host a first-round game more than that guy right there. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I just can't wait for the end of season conversations when we're discussing what exactly is going to happen in the postseason. It's going to be so good, and some people are going to be very upset. Heather, Paul, great to see you as always. Give me something.